it's been demonstrated in, in patients who have a cardiac arrest, for instance, uh, that patients, uh, the care that they receive after they have their cardiac arrest event is very important and has a strong correlation with their overall probability of hospital survival. And so we wanted to know if that same uh, thing was true in patients who received eCPR because with an eCPR patient, everyone's concerned about how to cannulate and getting them cannulated and, and where they should do it and who should do it and how they should do it. And these are all really important questions, but then there's a lot of care that is uh, provided to those patients after they get cannulated. So there's a lot of additional therapies that many of them get, including coronary angiography, uh, there's considerations of uh, assessing cardiac function and unloading the heart and, and ensuring that patients don't have limb ischemia. And so we wanted to look at a lot of these post-cannulation variables and to see what the strength of their association with survival was. And so we looked at things, as I mentioned, like coronary angiography, because many of these patients have an acute coronary event that leads them to their cardiac arrest and to getting eCPR. So we wanted to know if actually taking them to the cath lab and doing uh, angiography and PCI was beneficial. We also looked at interventions such as uh, a distal perfusion catheter placement, because many of them have ischemia within their legs. And we looked at things like left ventricular unloading. And then we also looked at interventions, uh, or the intervention of, of case volume. So it's been shown that for uh, many types of patients on ECMO, that the more uh, cases you have per center, the higher the probability of survival is for that patient. And this is likely due to a, you know, a volume outcome relationship uh, at that hospital. So we looked at that same question for eCPR. And we found that many of these interventions uh, did have a strong uh, association with survival. Uh, and likewise, there was a strong volume outcome relationship for adult eCPR. Um, and we took that further and we looked at different ventilatory parameters for adult eCPR, how much the managing the ventilator uh, Yeah, so the, the question is, you know, which of these interventions is the most important? Um, it's really hard to know because uh, none of these uh, have been studied in randomized fashion, so it's hard to draw a one-to-one -one comparison of the strength um, of each one. You can look at the strength of the, the association and try and get a sense of the potential magnitude of effect, but uh, probably one of the most important things just to start with uh, as a pragmatist is just doing the process well. And so while it would be nice to have all centers have high volume and have all centers do all these therapies, it's probably most important just to do what you do well first. And so if you're going to cannulate for eCPR, doing that in a consistent, safe way is probably most important for the patients. So what this means is having a team that works together so you don't um, it doesn't take you a long time to cannulate.